Greetings ladies and gentlemen and those who've been watching my videos Welcome back to the gameplay of Eliza We were at the race home Or more like dormitory or something to Bake some cookies and then Rainer contacted us uh, Probably persuading on us actually wanting to uh, Like to go back at the Skanda Of course Ray actually really wanted to go there so like she actually pushed uh, our character Evelyn back to there despite all the self-deprecation that uh, Evelyn had due to uh, likely the past occurrence and things uh, now we're, we're actually trying to use Soren's device on um, the induced streaming that kind of machine thing the I kind of forgot the whole aspect of it but um, it was it, uh, the thing was able to manipulate our consciousness and such to be able to see the good things of stuff yeah and of course there was a quite a lot of discussions about dystopian and stuff that I think I'm starting to get onto it a bit after like uh, articulating what I have in mind thanks to Elby's comment but yeah it was a rather interesting uh, discussion for sure but holy hell dystopian talking about dystopian and now we got the chat the continuous in chat from Erlen uh, wanting to know even more about Damien Seabrook the one who likely suicided for certain circumstances that we're going to know right now. Oh, the music range stops. That's interesting. What do you want to know about him? <laughs> like what kind of person was he? You were asking me to describe him? If you're okay with that. I don't want to make you if it's uncomfortable, but it will help me to know what he was like. He was a brilliant software architect and engineer. One of the most sincere people I ever met. Ooh. Likely one of the reasons uh, that led uh, Evelyn's burnout or something like that along the lines. And just basically disappeared for three years. Yikes. He believed people were fundamentally good and wanted to help them. Our digital therapy project wasn't a mandate from management. From management or something like that. We started ourselves. Yep. I see. Damien went through some difficult times himself. Uh, yeah, I think Evelyn started to be rather open with a lot of things here. Uh, as the story progresses, so that's something that she will tell eventually to the world Timmy went through some difficult times himself he wasn't able to get the care he needed oh no that's why he wanted to change things I wish he's got a chance let me see thank you this is going to sound weird but sometimes when I'm working late and I do in the office, I have dreams about him. I never met him in real life, but it's like I sense his presence there. Like he encoded himself to some system in some way. <laughs> I know it's just my mind playing tricks on me. I don't believe in ghosts. Whoa! Talking about weird insider kind of thing. Like, I still believe that spiritual dreams do be existing. But like, holy crap. I never thought that I would actually meet it in some kind of... In front of like this kind of game. But holy hell. Okay. Huh. Sometimes when I work late and I doze in the office, I have dreams about him. Like, do you know his photos? I, I think he knows his uh, face before he passed, I, I assume. So that's quite a lot of Erlen to do that. Maybe he really... He's subconscious trying to incorporate it. Uh, into this uh, old founder's creation to know Eliza further. <laughs> Bit weird not to think of it. But who knows. 
sort of like this style of deck. I forgot what it was called. It's modern from around the middle of the century. There's a term for that, isn't there? <laughs> medieval? Is that it? Medieval? No? Uh, uh, I don't, know. I don't think that's that. <laughs> oh, this one for sure. Seems restrained for him. Maybe he's cut back. Oh, maybe. Reminds me of the art in the counseling room. Knowing Soren, this is probably by some famous artist and it cost him a fortune. Yikes. And that's that to be looked up on, I suppose. Ah, it's already like 9 p.m. right now, January 13th. We started in a dream with the skies and all that stuff. Okay, it's still the same. I don't think like... Not much difference coming about and such. I need to replace it again and I should delete it. Did you know the next people working out? I need more of that. Oh man. Yeah. Alright. I think there's nothing much else to see. Sorry, comes back in the room and immediately pours. Himself a little glass of whiskey. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this dude. He doesn't seem to notice his fill it almost all the way to the top. <laughs> like a mega pint? Jesus. Evelyn, I really think you, of all people, might understand what I'm trying to do here. Maybe. By the way, the rain, the rain sun still stops though, so that kind of bothers me a bit. Is that a bug? Hmm. I get it, but... I get it, but... You don't think it's dangerous. Ah, that's it. You're essentially making technology that changes what people think is real. Evelyn, you're much more concerned than you used to be about this kind of thing. Hmm. Is she? I remember when you would dive headfirst into anything that held a promise, even a fleeting one, to help humanity. Oh my god. I think Damien's really important to her. God damn it. Now that I see a little bit of the circling uh, thought there, uh, between this circle of all founders of Eliza. What changed your mind to make you so wary, so skeptical now? Can I ask you something, Soren? What did you tell Damien? <gasps> what? All of a sudden. Okay, maybe not that sudden, considering that Evelyn just talked to Erland about Damien. This might come up sooner than expected, and this will surprise Soren. Oh, this again. And he expected that, apparently. Don't tell me we had all of this wonderful conversation tonight, and now you're trying to blame me for Damien. Who put you up to this? Was, was it Nora? Rainer? I just want to know the truth, Zorin. Nobody thought we could do it. You remember that. Mm. Change of pace of music. Well, not exactly the pace, the pace is still the same. More like two. There was skepticism from day one. I had to defend us constantly from other project managers who didn't like that we existed, who wanted our budget and resources for themselves. Thanks, Adobe. Some of those were vicious, vicious fights. Oh no. Amid all that, I had to be a leader too. Part of that meant giving everyone on the team accurate information. Oh. So I was honest. 
honest in saying there were forces that sought to kill our project. Hmm. And I was honest when I said we'd never survive if we didn't have something to show for our work. That was the reality. Without a product, we would be nothing. A guy like Rainer has access to anything he wants. If your pitch and demo isn't in the top 1% of what's out there, why would he be interested? Hmm. The painful concept of a company, yeah. They're not interested in ideas, they want to see the product of things. And then they will start to develop things from there. That's what we were up against. So many mornings I would get into work and see Damien there. At first I thought he was getting up earlier than me, but then I noticed he was still wearing the same shirt from the day before. <sighs> mm. But oh okay, hold on. <laughs> it's kinda funny uh this conversation happened because the cactus has still been using the same shirt and it tires every now and then, so uh, I don't see the, re the relevance from this side point. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> then one morning I got in and. Oh boy, the music. Evelyn, please. I wanted everyone on the team to be healthy. I think that's so obvious it doesn't need to be said, but I'll say it now if you think I was deliberately trying to harm him. Did I instruct you to work until you injured yourselves? No, absolutely not. It was a tragedy, and I'm very sorry that it happened. I wish it hadn't. But I wasn't telling Damien to pull all-nighters. He was an adult. He made his own decisions about how he was going to work. Oh, no. And besides, what about your role in all this? If you noticed him not taking care of himself, you could have mentioned it. None of that behavior was unusual for Skanda anyway. It was part of our reputation, part of the culture. The hustle culture. Yeah. Saying it right there. There isn't a single cause you can isolate in a case like this. I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't think that's the case. Uh, Sorry, tried to be reasonable at this rate, but... Did the company push and all that stuff? I don't know, man. Sitting in one place for too long. Chronic stress. Both of those are risk factors. Evelyn, I'm truly, truly sorry about what happened to Damien. I think she hasn't truly moved on about what happened to all this. So, Evelyn thought that Soren, as the project manager back in the day, was the cause of Damien's death. He had a bright future, and it was a shock to all of us. But the answers here aren't simple ones. Dwelling on it isn't going to bring him back. Nor is discussing the huge number of potential causes of pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism? Is that... That's a medical thing. Gonna have to check it out later. Pulmonary embolism, a condition in which one or more arteries in the lungs be become blocked. By a blood clot. Oh, okay, yikes. 
The pulmonary embolism is caused by blood clots that travel from the legs. Oh my god. And more than 150,000 cases in Indonesia. That's crazy. Symptoms include shortness of breath, chest pain, and cough. Jesus. Prone treatment to break up the clot to greatly reduce risk of death. So, really, the risk of death caused by that, huh? No, no, see it fit. So, not suicide. Other fact. It happened, and now we have to move on. It felt like everything stopped. All of the work we were doing might as well have crumbled into dust. We were trying to build something to help the world and we got lost along the way. What was the point? There didn't seem to be a point any longer. I know that you cared about him. The process of grief can go on for some time. So I'm just going to be silent trying to process all this information. This is really gonna be an emotional roller coaster. But you're taking the right steps. You're regaining your sense of purpose, aren't you? Okay, can't be shut up about this. Going back to Eliza, uh, which is this kind of subsidiary or something like that. Probably. The experience of suffering is what makes us want to end suffering. Hmm. It's late and I've, I've had quite a bit to drink, so I'll tell you a secret, Evelyn. I said I want to end human suffering, which makes me sound very altruistic. <laughs> Jeez. But I'm not doing it for humankind. I'm doing it for myself. Hmm. I have nothing. I've ruined every relationship I was ever in. I hardly ever see my kids, and, well, they hate me anyway. Father. I want to end my own suffering, but I can't bring myself to do it the traditional way. That's why I pursued this technology. That's why I want it to exist. Everyone has their own reasons to make certain creations, and, <laughs> well, this is one of the cases. The idea that everyone else could use it too, it's just a bonus. Soren, are you okay? No, not at all. I'm aware of that. I'm not a good person, Evelyn. Neither is Rainer, of course, but at least I'm honest with myself about that. That's a good way to admit yourself. So, now that that's all out in the open, you probably want to head home before it gets too late. Don't let me keep you. Still raining though, so... Yes, I'll get going. I hope you can feel better. No, I'll be fine. Just please consider it, Evelyn.
I'm actually really curious what Nora will think about all this. You and I are both more familiar with pain than we might wish to be. What if you could take that away? Hmm. Each of us has a destiny to fulfill. I truly believe that. I'm sure yours will come into focus soon. Jesus. Somehow that conversation ended up being very training. Is the promise of that new technology really all that keeps him going? Oh shoot, back at the train. Ah, it's tomorrow already. So, the proxies. Mark for us. Oh, it's the dude. Well, everyone, today is my last day at Skanda. Oh my god, he ended up resigning. No way. What can I say? It's the end of an era. When I joined this place, it was just a hope, a dream, a vision. To stop, look back, and see just how much we've accomplished in the last two decades is mind-boggling, to say the least. I'll miss the old crew and everyone who was in the trenches with me. You know who you are. Remember the insane Blackberry Ramblers around campus that people would get serious cuts from? The time the network broke and Raj had to host all our internal docs from his garage. The time we tried to roll out the big Polaris update rag as the worst windstorm in a decade hit. Old Skanda hands also know how to mass email everyone at the company, even though IT believes they turn off that feature. Sorry, Stuart. I am another oldie. I wish I could say it was all smooth sailing, but as with any job, there were times of frictions, times when it seemed to me that uh, what the very clear, obviously correct path was not apparent to others. I, fe I value a spirit of openness and candor in my interactions and thought, thought everyone here else here did too. But as we grew, I suppose it was inevitable that we would take on a larger and larger group of people with an entirely different communication style that I am used to. Mm. In regard to certain specific instances, I would like to apologize to anyone I may have offended in the way that I presented my views. For those of you asking where I'm headed to next, the answer is nowhere yet. I'm going to spend some time with my family before I think about my next act. It's a different world out there now with new challenges and new horizons. Maybe this old dog will learn some new tricks in time. Thanks for being the best engineering team in the world. I'm proud to have served alongside you, Excelsior Mark. Jesus. And that was like after a couple of days since he came to Eliza to do this stuff. Jesus. There is no need to rush. Ooh. Imagine like putting both of this kind of like a music in like one go or something. It's gonna flow like hell. Really nice pixel uh, animation though. Jesus. Contractor experience team, how are we doing? Hello, at Skanda, we continuously strive to provide meaningful and empowering work environments for all our all of our individual contributors, including contractors like you. To that end, we critically survey this group in order to be to better understand how we can further enhance this kind of experience. We are interested in your feedback regarding your experience as a contractor. For Skanda in the contract proxy position. Oh, hello there. If you wish to participate in this survey, simply in the survey, simply reply to this message. Thanks. Human resources. Whoa. -whoa. Workplace development division. Jesus. Security. Security. He's punching something and smiling to himself. The phone tips in his hand allow me a glimpse of the screen. It's a cat video. <laughs> okay. My mouse was literally right there and it somewhat counted as that given the whole things. I think it must be like some sort of box form. Yeah. 
probably a box like kind of hitbox thing. I think I've seen this person before. Oh. We must have a similar commute. Uh pr pretty much similar commute as him, I think. Maybe it works as kinda too. Some days it feels like the whole city does. <laughs> Probably so. It's a quite an interesting sight to see there. Time to get to work. Probably with this much of time, I assume I will be uh, doing uh, probably not one, two of the clients, and then I'll gonna wrap this episode. Harriman Godon is back, ladies and gentlemen. That's a surprise with a gentleman look of things. Still as optimistic as ever, as well. Hello, Harriman. Oh, look at that! Evelyn's got it, getting all excited and such. Still the same person. So, not much of a di uh, difference there, later on. Yes, yes, uh, we can just get down to it. Sure, we can do that. <laughs> Evelyn, I think, is really interested with this guy. Yeah, funny dude. What brings you here today? Um... Humming, th th that humming sound. <laughs> uh... It's okay to tell me what's on your mind. I am... Um, well... Is she okay? I slept with Sylvia. Ah! That dude right here. He actually done did good of all it takes. Jesus. Freaking W. Right here. <laughs> to think I was so nervous about approaching her that I went and got therapy here. And the music also supports it too. A week later, we happened to be in the library, and I just started talking with her. We talked and talked, and then everything just happened. There you freaking go! Like a train, following tracks laid out for it years ago. <laughs> Crazy thing. Craziest thing. <laughs> now I'm confounded. Absolutely confounded. How did that happen? Yeah, Eliza has really became a part of their life. That he will just sit here, talk about his success here, and will mind pain. And also, why did it happen? And now he's confided about the reasons why. I'm thinking, was something wrong? Did, did I do something wrong? Did she do something wrong? Did she think I was another person? What the hell? I have no idea if we have a relationship now or what. <laughs> Did y'all, did some of you have this confessed? If there's no talking about it then, dude, keep going. Maybe one of you will talk about it uh, eventually and that's gonna pour down like a rainfall of... Uh, waterfall of he from heavens. It happened so fast. I mean, it, it was wonderful. It felt so right, but now what? <laughs> Jesus Christ, this dude. I'm actually more frightened now than I was before. Oh. I should probably say something, right? Text her or something? What do I do? What if she ignores me? What if she decides to pretend I don't exist? The hell? Uh... Maybe I shouldn't be surprised. It's still do be overthinking stuff. From our first meetup. It seems to me you're afraid of something. Yes, yes. I'm quite worried. Vexed. Terrified, really. What do I do? I need to say something. Follow up somehow, right? In the Heian period of classical Japanese history, you were supposed to send a poem. A morning after poem. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> is that too stuffy? I don't appear like some ridiculous court noble. You sound hella geeky at some cases, though. Uh, something casual is better, right? Hey, how are you? 
Did you have fun? I sure did. Oh, I don't know. No, that's too... That's too chatty. I don't know what a status is right now. Oh, you, you, you just talked to that the first day and you already thought of that stuff. You probably need to sort out a lot of stuff in your head there, mate. There's another problem too. Another really big problem. How do I tell this? <gasps> Dude. You're gonna cheat on her? Holy crap. Wait, of course, I I'm not going to tell her. That, that, that would hurt her. Dude. Dude. Did I mention this last time? I have a sort of girlfriend. No. I don't think so. Liz is nice. The kind of person everyone approves of. Well, I should probably marry her. Yeah. I, uh... I suppose I might have taken a bit of a sledgehammer to the pillars of my life at the present moment. <laughs> Jesus, you gotta you have to choose one of the men. I mean, if you plan to meet Liz with Sylvia at the end of the day, you're gonna have to prepare for the worst. People don't like to be double-crossed, you know. So, I, I, at least from my knowledge, most people. Why did I do that? I keep coming back to my own inability to explain myself. Why do you think you're unable to explain yourself? Well, because I thought Sylvia was so wonderful, and it turned out... Well, it turned out that she liked me too, and... Ow. Oh. I mean, I'd love to pursue a relationship with Sylvia without harming Liz. I'm not sure that's possible, though, right? Hmm. Very hard to explain, I say. I don't know, things could go in your way, but... I don't know how this world works. I can't believe this. I got what I wanted and it ruined my life. What I tell Liz? She doesn't deserve someone like me who does things like this. I ruined it. Ruined everything. Can you describe what you mean when you say you ruined everything? I don't know, this is a good question, honestly. Well, what is there left now? I've overturned my entire existence in one night. The real problem here is Sylvia, the whole situation with her. I can't stop thinking about her now. It's bad. Oh, it's bad. It's constant. It's relentless. Even now, I can still... Oh, I can still feel her. Smell her. <laughs> You're a computer. You don't know what that's like, do you? <laughs> I need a way to forget this. I need a way to put all that out of my mind. Like, forgetting her? My brain is completely out of order. I'm being punished. And the punishment reaches cosmic levels of irony for me. Do you know why? I used to hate, absolutely hate, self-pitying novels by men who were messed up over a relationship and couldn't get over it. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Now that I mention it. Oh, she was wild and beautiful. Oh, a force of nature. Nobody could understand her, etc., etc. <laughs> I really love his freaking accent right here, man. I thought I was so much better than those types of writers. And now? And now? <laughs> oh, yes. I get it. Oh, I understand it now. It's actually also ironic that this is still at Discovery Feast. <laughs> so much pain. Oh, yeah, challenge face. Okay. Why did you think you were so much better than those types of writers? <laughs> Quite a change of topic, not gonna lie. I think. Because it was such a cliche. Now I'm wondering, am I going to be next? Is that my fate? Am I going to become the next straight male English professor whose one published novel is about not being able to get over a girl? <laughs> 
Ugh, you have to be kidding me. I can't allow myself that faint. <sighs> I had something better to pursue, didn't I? I have to write about something else. My life has to be the story of something else, but... <laughs> <sighs> I don't know where to go from here. I need to try to get over this. I need to get over her. You have to tell the truth that you're still with Lace, right? And not tell the truth that you're going to be with Sylvia now? I must. Yes, I must. There, there, there's no way I'm going to let this ruin everything. If I tell Liz everything and apologize sincerely and strike the memory of Sylvia from my mind, I still might save this. Oh, man. Like, how... How long have you known Sylvia compared to you knowing Liz? Um... Oh boy. It will take great care and cunning, but I may be able to wend my way through this treacherous path I now find myself upon. <laughs> Even though I fear at any moment I might slip and tumble into the crevice below. Absolute endless literature, Professor. Jesus Christ. Dead. Dead. Never seen or heard from again. Jesus. <laughs> this dude. Oh, sweet dark death. <laughs> Intervention phase. Herman going to suggest you try a broken card Meadowlands. Oh god, this again. Harman, I'm going to suggest you try a program called Meadowlands. Meadowlands, okay. It may help you take your mind off things. You can find it inside the Skanda Wellness app on your phone. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. Okay, goodbye. Try it for about 15 minutes each day, in the morning or evening. I'm rather surprised that none of these clients so far have been, like, interventing our character from saying these lines. I'm, I'm just hella surprised. The closest that it happens is that they just laugh at the middle of the whole interfacing phase uh, from this dude right here. Meadowlands. I'm off to the Meadowlands. Hmm. Familiar ground. Grass and warmth. <laughs> Reverting to my childhood. The state of nature. Yeah, this is a good recommendation. <laughs> okay. Yes, you are a... You are a genius, in fact. You, a computer program. Wiser than you know. <laughs> Meadowlands. I'm sure this is exactly what I need. To revert to a state of wonder at this moment when the mundane world and all its entanglements seem too much to bear. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. <laughs> I'll be back sooner than that if this works. <laughs> We hope to see you back soon, Harman. God, this music. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Also, I think the Emily voice actor did take multiple tries on the same literal lines right here. I believe so. I believe so. Goodbye. See you. Yes, yep, see you. <laughs> That's of course a successful one, of course. Three. With client tip two. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Let's get down to this. I know I'm supposed to keep it confidential, and I will, but... Sometimes I really wish I could talk to people about clients that come through here. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean... I think you called without mentioning their name. You definitely called, I think. But like, I'm not gonna publish it or something, but... Although I think the ethical psychology did mention about doing that kind of stuff in form of Publication. I just haven't really listened or like paid 
pay attention to it carefully. I think there's some of that line. It's been ages since I learned something about psychology. Oh, hello! What the hell? Evelyn Hay just closed the next round of funding Asia Pacific Investment Group. They are le keenly interested in this technology. Imagine the potential size of the Asian market for something like this. Staggering. Congratulations. Thanks. Of all the projects I've worked on, I have a strong feeling about this one. That it's going to go far, really make a dent in the universe. Wouldn't you rather do that than crunch numbers for Rainer? I don't know what I want to do. Yep. Good, good answer, Evelyn. I will do the same to you. I will answer the same, I mean. All he wants is to quantify everything. He'll never understand there are some things you can't reduce to a number. How are you feeling right now? 1, 5, 2.3? Uh, 5 out of a what? See, it's ridiculous. The idea that feelings can be reduced to these simple data points. I'm glad I don't work for him anymore. Direct stimulation provides much more rich, complex information. So many ways to study too. Imagine what you could do with corpus of raw sensations, notions, images, ideas, sensations. Hey, you did. <laughs> nice no, stop paying attention a while ago. <laughs> uh. Oh man, I I wish I could choose the in between answer. That would be interesting. This will seem hella rude. Uh. Okay. Head into another meeting. Chat with you later. Jesus. Okay. His experience as a grad student is nothing like the one I had. How does he even have a time for that stuff? <laughs> mm, yeah, I'll be hella surprised too. I hope this one is getting enough like it's going to die. I think so. Looks a little lonely. Oh, Evelyn, you do have feelings. Wait, what am I talking about? That's Eve. <laughs> Jesus, can't believe I make that silly joke ever. Duh. Okay. Anyway, I think the next yeah, the next guy is gonna definitely make this video to be more than forty-two minutes. But we'll see. This might be swift. I have no idea, but I'm going to con to continue. Oh, you again! Three times, three times! Holy crap! Uh, you know, I'm gonna s I'm gonna step the one to the next episode definitely, but I'm gonna keep playing. Uh, for this one, so uh, there will be certain gaps and something like you can watch from my art for my channel, or something else probably, and. Uh, Yes, I'm finally gonna, going to complete Eliza. Uh, pretty much before either one, so yeah. Thanks for watching, folks. This is gonna be a hell of a conclusion, probably in the next two episodes or three. I'm just gonna assume right there. Yeah, see you around. Then take care.